so we are back at the clinic. Um, it is cycle day 11, I think. I think we're in day 11. Um, I had more blood work done today. I had blood work done yesterday. Um, and I had asked them to actually send me my results yesterday for like my levels, for my estrogen level. And I noticed like it had actually gone down. And I was like, oh, maybe they just confused the days. Like, maybe it was 299 and then it jumped up to like four, the 436 or whatever. Uh, no. It actually did go down. So there is a good chance that we missed ovulation this time, which has never happened. I've never had a, a cycle where we've missed it. Um, I will know more later when I get my results. Um, and then we're going to figure out a game plan because the reality is... Well, my nurse was telling me that I just respond really well to the gonal F, so not starting it as early next time um, and just like coming in for more consistent monitoring. Um, so I'll know more in the next couple of hours and then I can update you guys, but yeah, that's where we are right now. So, I mean, I was feeling really optimistic about this this cycle and I mean I responded really well to the medication so that's a good thing um it's obviously it's just a lot it's a process it's long so it's where we're at but we'll wait and see what they say and then I'll update you guys later today when I know more but that's where we're at right now so I don't I don't even know I don't know Okay, do you see my cat in the background? Weirdest thing. Uh, my levels went back up and then some. So yesterday my estrogen was 299 and my LH was a 7. And then today my estrogen went up to 630 and my LH is a 6. So... What we're thinking it happened is that my body, like I released one of the eggs, one of them dropped, because I had two, I had a 15 and a 12 two days ago when we scanned. Um, so that's what they're thinking it is. So, I mean, I wasn't expecting that answer. Um, so tomorrow I will go in for an ultrasound and blood work. Um, and we'll see like if that's, that's the reason why my level dropped, um, and then we'll discuss whether or not we're going to move forward with this cycle, if this is like a good one. Um, yeah, I'll know, I guess I'll know more tomorrow, but that is the update for you guys. That's very strange, but yeah. Charlie, pretending like she doesn't hear me. Charlie? Hi. Here's a follow up. Um, I just got blood work done in a scan. Um, and it looks like I'm stalling. So I have a follicle that's measuring at 15.5 and two that are measuring at 11. And last time I had a scan, which was done, I guess it would be three days ago. I had one measure, one follicle at 15 and one at 12. So I don't know if I dropped a follicle and then this was like that 12, but it's just not, it's not growing. I don't know, we're stalling basically. Um, so I think we're gonna cancel this cycle. So we only have like, I'm gonna cry about it again, I already did. We only have one vial left. Um, so it's like really important that it, we don't just take a chance, um, to see, obviously there's, it's always just like, in this case, it's always just a chance, but I don't want to add any more like extra risk, um, of that it won't work. So if we're not certain that it is a good viable follicle, um, then we don't want to move forward, um, because we only have the one vial left. It was really hot in my car. I am just, I literally cried about it when the nurse told me. And then I cried to my partner. Cause I'm tired. That's, 
this process is just so much different than when I got pregnant with Kaya. Um, it's just, it's a lot and I'm tired. Um, I'll know more, obviously, once I get my orders, I believe we're 100% canceling it, but that's what it's looking like right now. And I'm extra emotional because of these freaking hormones. <laughs> I'm just tired. Okay, update from this morning's appointment. So, um, my doctor is going back. That's super annoying. It's my iced coffee because coffee is life. Anyways, um, so my doctor gave me two options. One of the options was we can cancel the cycle right now because it does look like I'm stalling. Um, but I am still early in the cycle. Um, and then option two is I can go back in two days. So keep taking my gonal F every night, go back in two days, do another ultrasound and blood work and see what we're working with. Um, and on Sunday, we'll decide if it's the quality that we're looking for. Otherwise we will cancel the cycle. Um, so we are, we are gonna go with option two because at this point, like we have the medication, we've paid for the medication, we've gone this far, like we might as well just kind of see what plays out. Like if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Um, if this cycle is meant to work, like this is the route that we are meant to take. If it's not meant to work out, then we'll know on Sunday. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. So. I'm gonna do a shot tonight, a shot tomorrow, cause today's Friday, um, when I'm filming this portion, and then go back bright and early Sunday morning, and then we'll know Sunday afternoon. Well, like Sunday morning, cause not many people go in on the, the weekend unless you're right before. Like, unless you're in like this part of your cycle, they don't usually do a lot of weekend appointments. At least when I've been there, I've only ever seen like one or two other people there. But I tend to go a lot on the weekends just how like my cycles have always lined up um but yeah so that's that's the update um yeah i don't know we'll see so i'm gonna oh update also earlier i had said i was gonna get nicole to do all of the shots for me because i hate needles like i remember the first time i had to take a trigger shot I almost like hyperventilated and like bawled my eyes out because I was so scared to do it to myself and I was so scared to have her do it to me um but last night I actually forgot my shot until later in the evening which was like really bad but she had already gone to bed and I of course was wasting time on TikTok which I'm literally going to delete but regardless um so I just I did it I did it myself. I stabbed myself last night um, with my Gonal F pen, and I was like, "Okay, that wasn't as, that wasn't that bad." But I'm very proud of myself for doing that. So, anyways, I'm gonna get back to doing some work because I have a lot, a lot to do. I'm going to enjoy my iced coffee. Yeah, I do. I put straws because this lid leaks no matter what like it's always freaking leaking and i just got tired of it so i don't even try anymore um yeah i'm gonna get back to work because i have a lot to do it's friday of a long weekend yeah so i'll keep you guys like i've said in every freaking clip on this video like i will keep you guys updated update i went back to the clinic this morning and we did another ultrasound and blood work. So my blood work from last time I took a picture when I was there was, let me just find it. So my estrogen level went from 6.30 to 8.35. Um, and then today, I don't know what my estrogen level was, but I have three follicles, size 18, size 16, and size 12. Um, so they did tell me to take my Ovidril trigger shot. So we're gonna do that. They told me to take it at seven, it's 7.09. 
and I will go back on Tuesday at 7 a.m. for the IUI. If I keep looking this way, that's because Nicole's sitting on the couch. But she's gonna go ahead and stab me. Because I don't know, you're in the room. <laughs> and I'm an awkward individual. So we're gonna go and do that. Is anybody else able to open this box without shredding it? Because it's not my life. Every time I open it, I just shred it. But when you open it, this is what it looks like. A lot like I imagine what an EpiPen looks like. You have the pen, and then you have the needle tip in there. So. Oh, it already has the bead at the end. You and me, yeah, that's all I need. And I'll be alright. So my pen you twist until you see 250 in the window. You can stab me. Oh sir, I wanna stay here with you. Anybody else's allergies like at just like out of control in the morning specifically because like it's awful like so bad anyways I'm going to get a coffee before I go to my appointment um it's 648 I have to be there at 7 it's up the street it's fine and it is already 21 degrees and it's September it's gonna be 43 today, and it's September. We have a heat wave, and it's just like yesterday was brutal. Last week was cold, but whatever. Um, just to give you like a play by play on how this appointment is gonna go, because I don't know how much I'm gonna film. Um, so I have to go for a seven, and they have to take my sample out of the freezer, and then they have to wash it. Um, so that takes about an hour. Um, so I will just, I usually just go downstairs and do work. I'm not feeling stressed today. I was just like, I feel like I'm at peace for some weird reason. Um, so I'll go downstairs, I'll do some work, they'll call me, I'll go back upstairs and then we'll do the procedure, which obviously doesn't take very long. One second, I'm gonna order coffee. Good morning, Omar, okay. Hi there, can I have a medium double-double? Medium double-double? And a sausage farmer's wrap. Yep, and that's all, please. Yep. Thank you. Um. So yeah, the procedure itself doesn't take very long. I stay there for ten minutes afterwards, and then I go home and I start my luteal luteal phase medication tomorrow. So, and then we're in the two week wait. Um, this is my last sample, so I am willing all of the positive energy that this is going to work. This has been kind of an emotional, it's been an emotional cycle. Um, 
but yeah, I'm very hopeful that it's gonna work. So. Yeah, I'm excited for a tour. I don't think I've ever, I definitely never said this on my channel, but um, growing up, I always really wanted like a big family. Like I was like, oh, I'm gonna have four kids. No, <laughs> not in this day and age, honestly, like it's really expensive. But also it's more expensive if, you know, you're a same sex couple going through fertility. Like it's a lot, it's very expensive. Um, so there's no way that we would be having four kids. One second. Anyways, um, it's just, it's very expensive when you're going through fertility treatments. There's no way that we'd be able to, have, to afford to have four kids. But also, if I was going to have four kids, I really would have liked to, honestly, just start earlier in life. I'm trying to figure out which way I'm going. Um, and we didn't, and that's okay, but I grew up, honestly, sorry, I'm about to do it. Sorry. Um, I grew up with a parent that was older, um, and I that's something that like I really struggled with. That I really did not, I didn't want to do that. Um, I want to be able to show up for my kids. I want to be able to go to all of their events and just you know be able-bodied enough to be able to be there for them and throughout their entire life into their adulthood into when they have babies and I'm a grandma like if also like with that like both of my parents are no longer here so that's something that's very hard too that like you know you go through all of like your your adult milestones and they're not here with you and that sucks so it was important to me that I not be like an older parent um and I'm still, I would have liked to still have started having kids younger, but that's just not where I was in life. Like life just didn't hand me that opportunity and that's okay. I'm still able to have kids now. I'm hoping to have a second and I'm very, very, very fortunate that I have my daughter. Like I just want to be able to give her a sibling. I want her to have that feeling of growing up with a, a buddy who in the end is just going to be there for you know, hopefully they'll be there for each other and they'll be close and that's what I want. Um, so yeah, there's obviously a lot of driving factors into wanting to have more kids, but I've never explained that. So I thought I would, um, but yeah, I have seven minutes to eat my breakfast and go to my appointment. So no one else makes me feel this way. Don't know what you do. You hold